Hello and welcome to this video on pure component phase equilibria uh, calculated using equations of state part 1. At the end of this video you will be able to define and explain the criteria for phase equilibria, define partial Gibbs free energy and explain how we can get two sets of properties from a single equation of state. So what we're concerned with in this section is calculating the phase equilibria of a pure component. So of course we know that, uh, that uh, fluids have phase equilibria, so we can get liquids and gas phases coexisting, solids and gas phases, uh, liquids and solids, so forth and so on. Okay, and so, so here's a, a common representation of the phase equilibria that we commonly see in, in various thermodynamics textbooks. So what we want to be able to do is to, to calculate what the phase equilibria is using an equation of state instead of having to use a chart or look it up in a table. So the first thing we're going to look at here is why do phases coexist at all? And so what we have here is we have a system with a, a vapor phase or a gas phase and a liquid phase as well. And so what we're going to do is to define the Gibbs free energy of the system as a whole. Okay, so we take the whole system, which includes both the gas and the liquid phases, and we say that the Gibbs free energy of this system is the sum of the gas and the liquid phase Gibbs free energies. Now to be at equilibrium, so, so the vapor phase stays the same and the liquid phase stays the same as far as we can see from a macroscopic viewpoint, then the Gibbs free energy must be at a minimum. Okay, so we have to be sitting at the bottom of that Gibbs free energy curve. And so when we do that and we have a look at, uh, at what's going on, we can look at the transfer of a, uh, a single molecule between the vapor phase and the gas phase. And we can look at the Gibbs free energy change. So if we're at that minimum point, so that minimum point that we looked at on the, the previous slide here, if we're at that minimum, then this little tiny transfer of a molecule is not going to move us away from that. So we can say that the change in Gibbs free energy is equal to zero when we're at equilibrium for such a small transfer of molecules. And we can define the, the partial differentials. So the change in Gibbs free energy of the gas, okay, so Gibbs free energy of the gas for the transfer of the gas molecule at constant temperature and pressure, and the change in Gibbs free energy of the liquid for the transfer of a gas molecule at constant temperature and pressure. Now, instead of looking at uh, the transfer of just the gas molecule, we'll substitute in instead the, the, the gain in the liquid molecules is just the negative of the loss of the gas molecules. And so when we equate these two things, we now get a condition that satisfies equilibrium that the, the partial differential of the Gibbs free energy with the change in the number of molecules is equal for both phases. So there's no reason for one phase or another phase to gaze, gain any molecules because to do so would be to move away from that minimum that we saw on the previous slide. And so we can state that quite succinctly here if we use something called the partial Gibbs free energy. Now, this partial Gibbs free energy is a really, really important property. So we'll be using this a number of times during the course. So whenever you see this overbar, what it means is a partial molar property. And so here we're saying the, the partial molar property of the Gibbs free energy for component I is defined by this equation up here. Okay, so, so wherever any of you see that over, it's a partial molar property which is defined as the change in the property, in this case Gibbs free energy, by 
the change in the number of moles of that component. Now in this section we're going to be looking at pure components and so for a pure substance only we can say that the partial Gibbs free energy is equal just to the molar Gibbs free energy. Okay, That's for pure substances only but that's the case that we'll be looking at in this week. So what this gives us then is a set of criteria for phase equilibrium and so some of these criteria are quite obvious that if we've got two phases and they're at equilibrium they'll have the same temperature. If we've got two phases and they're at equilibrium they will have the same pressure and then as we've just discussed if we've got two phases and they're at equilibrium they'll have the same partial Gibbs free energy in both the phases. Okay, and so, so this is the criteria that we're mainly going to be looking at in the next few slides. Now how do we actually use this criteria in a calculation? So first of all let's start off by looking at a little bit of data. And so what I've pulled here is a steam table from Koretsky. And so if we have a look at um, at a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, okay, so 10 degrees Celsius here, and I can calculate what the difference in Gibbs free energy is between the gas phase and the liquid phase. And so to do that, I can just use the, uh, the definition of Gibbs free energy, which is G is just equal to H minus T S. Okay, so if I'm if I'm going to calculate a delta G, this is the result here. And so from the table, I can get the uh, the delta H term. Okay, so that's just given by the uh, this term here. Okay, and then I can calculate the uh, the delta S term as well. Okay, so when I substitute those into this equation, so 247.7 that, and then the temperature, 10 degrees Celsius, what I get is, is that the Gibbs free energy difference between the liquid and the vapor is essentially zero. Okay, so, so therefore we can conclude this table is correct that Koretsky uh, knew what he was doing when he put together this steam table. So we should hardly be surprised about this, okay, but it's it's confirmation of what we've just looked at in the previous couple of slides. That's all. Now, just like we were able to calculate delta H and delta S using equations of state, we can also calculate delta G as well. And so what we'll consider in this section is we'll look at uh, calculating the vapor liquid equilibrium for a single component. And so what the question then becomes is that for a single or that for a given temperature, what pressure satisfies the criteria where the gas phase Gibbs free energy and the liquid phase Gibbs free energy equal each other. So that's obviously what Koretsky did in the previous table. So, but how can we do that for ourselves using an equation of state? And so the question that immediately comes to mind is how do we actually get two sets of properties from a single equation? And so if we have a look at what an equation of state looks like, Okay, so, so this plot here is being made at a temperature smaller than the critical temperature. So when you do that, you get these nice curvy sort of equations that we've got here. And But what the ramification of this curve is, is that for a particular pressure, so in this case we've got a, a dotted line here at 2 megapascals, so at 2 megapascals, we've actually got three solutions for what the volume is. So we've got a, a gas phase solution, we've got a liquid phase solution, 
and we've also got this uh, what I'm calling a fake solution so this is a solution that doesn't correspond with any actual real phase okay so so the two solutions that we're really interested in are the gas phase solution and the liquid phase solution and so if you change the pressure that you're interested in so let's say I was interested in what's the volume at 1.5 megapascals then we get a new gas phase volume a new liquid phase volume and a new fake volume as well but we're not going to spend any time talking about that now because we can get two different volumes that means that the gas phase has its own unique properties and that the liquid phase has its own unique properties as well which we're able to calculate and so if we go back to our criteria okay so our our criteria for for phase equilibriums here and what we'll do is instead of just looking at absolute Gibbs free energy which we can't calculate anyway we'll split this into an ideal gas part and also a departure part and so the departure part is very useful because uh, as you can suspect this is something that we can get from an equation of state now for this equation here it's still not really clear why these two sides might be different okay so so the left hand side for the gas phase the right hand side for the liquid phase but what's inside the brackets is apparently the same where they're different is from the fact that once you solve for volume that the gas phase has its own unique volume and then also the liquid phase has its own unique volume as well this means that these two quantities here are not necessarily equal in fact those two quantities are only equal at the point where you've got the correct vapor pressure and so we can say that our condition for phase equilibrium between the two phases is in fact this and this is the criteria that we're going to be using in the next couple of slides or in the next lecture but in a slightly different form so to recap what we've covered in this video phase equilibria is achieved when uh, temperature pressure and the Gibbs the partial Gibbs free energy of each component are equal in each phase for a pure fluid that partial Gibbs free energy is equal to the molar Gibbs free energy below the critical temperature an equation of state will have multiple solutions and two of those solutions will correspond to the gas phase and the liquid phase and because we've got two solutions then each of these phases will have its own property including the Gibbs free energy when these are equal then we've found the point of phase equilibrium okay thanks for your time